Hello and welcome, my name is Dr. Kate. In today's video, we will examine four gait deviations specific to the ankle and foot complex. Specifically, these gait deviations are related to the stance phase of the gait cycle. Alrighty, let's look at them. In the first gait deviation, we observe premature elevation of the heel at the mid or terminal stance of the gait cycle. Take a look. Here, the impairment is a lack of ankle dorsiflexion. The pathologic precursors may be congenital or acquired muscular tightness of ankle plantar flexors. Here, you will observe the characteristic bouncing gait. In the next gait deviation, we observe the opposite from the previous gait deviation. Here, the heel remains in contact with the ground at the terminal stance. Take a look. Here, the likely impairment is weakness or flaccid paralysis of plantar flexors with or without a fixed dorsiflex position of the ankle, past calcaneus deformity. The pathologic precursors are typically peripheral or central nervous system disorders, possibly excessive surgical lengthening of Achilles tendon. Here we observe excessive ankle dorsiflexion results in prolonged heel contact, reduced push-off, and a shortened step length. The next gait deviation that we will observe is a supinated foot during stance. Typically, patients with a supinated foot will weight bear on the lateral aspect of their foot. Let's take a look. Here, the likely impairment is pascavus deformity of the ankle and foot. Dyslectic pathological precursors would be congenital structural deformity. And here we observe a high medial longitudinal arch with reduced midfoot mobility throughout swing and stance phases of the gait cycle. The next gait deviation that we observe is excessive pronation during mid stance. Here we observe the medial longitudinal arch drop down and no supination at the end of mid stance or terminal stance. Let's take a look. Here, the likely impairment is rear foot varus and or forefoot varus. Typically, the pathological precursors would be congenital or acquired structural deformity of the foot. Here, we observe excessive foot pronation and associated flattening of the medial longitudinal arch. It may be accompanied by a general internal rotation of the lower extremity during stance.